Are we ready? Excellent. All right. I'm Carl Rochelle. I'm the CEO and founder of System76. I'm with Maria. Um, come on over. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Maria, come on over. I'm a UX uh, designer in System76. Maria. Oh, UX architect. This is the, uh, the US, uh, UX architect behind all the beautiful things that you're going to see. We're, we'll present together. Uh, I'm going to show you features, and uh, Maria is going to go over like the depth that we go into the design to make those features not so overwhelming, meaning you can, you can have the workflow that you want without having a million toggles that you have to switch to try to get to it. So that's what we'll, we'll be showing you. Um, so Cosmic is a new desktop environment developed by System76. Um, it's like GNOME or KDE. Um, it has uh, what's unique about it. GNOME uses GTK, KDE uses Qt. Um, we use a Rust toolkit called Iced, and we built a, a library called LibCosmic that all of our panels and applets and applications are built upon. Uh, by building upon this you know, single library, um, all the things like theming and, and, um, uh, and appearance and, and um, uh, the way the applications works, all the widgets inside the, uh, the applications are consistent across the experience. So something like if uh, like we have a, a setting for light and dark mode where at sunset it can switch to dark mode for you. Um, that means all the applications and everything flip at the same time, which on a really big display going from light to dark all of a sudden is quite, quite the experience on the desktop. So we'll be talking about, um, about Cosmic. I don't know if you know this, but we're pretty opinionated folks. We like things uh, uh, you know, a certain way. We like our, um, our desktops to be configurable in the way that we prefer. And one of the things that's really important about Cosmic is that even though we're, as users, opinionated, Cosmic isn't opinionated. If you like auto tiling, Cosmic has auto tiling. I3 and Sway style. Tiling, we're launching an application, we'll launch it into a tile, and um, we put a lot of emphasis on both the keyboard and mouse experience being really great with tiling, so we'll, we'll demo some of that as well. If you prefer floating windows, 60% of Pop! OS users use floating windows, 40% use tiling, so floating matters to our, a lot of our users, so we put just as much emphasis on having a great floating experience. In tiling, for instance, you can stack windows on top of each other and access them via tabs. Uh, you can do the same thing in floating with Cosmic. So you can have tab stacks in a floating environment. Maybe you like dark mode. Maybe you like no dock at all. Maybe you'd like the dock on the left. Maybe you want it to feel a little bit more like Ubuntu, the classic Ubuntu with nice browns and oranges. What's that? Does somebody actually like that? <laughs> it's kind of earthy. I, I, I like it. Um, maybe you like something uh, you know, dark with reds, and we have a panel on the left. We have the applets on each one of the, uh, on the panels set up in, in the configuration that I prefer, which has um, notifications or, or everything's accessible from one side, but all this space for my applications. You can also auto hide that panel. So your desktop can be just a wallpaper, and you use a launcher to launch, launch it like this, to launch your applications. But the point is you can, you can lay it out however it makes most sense to you. Um, maybe something a little more pleasant. You notice the colors change on the panel. Maybe you like horizontal workspaces. <laughs> Sorry, vertical workspaces. <laughs> maybe you prefer horizontal workspaces. Maybe you like workspaces per display. Maybe you want, so one, works, one display can have workspaces, then another one can have workspaces, and you can move between them independently. Or you can span workspaces. So you have two displays next to each other. You, when you move up a workspace, it'll move the entire view up to the next workspace. All of them, um, the, what, what's unique about Cosmic is that all of these different things in like layouts and, and ways that uh, you might prefer working with your operating system are very easy to set up. And you can configure a panel to be on the top, on the bottom. You can have a dock or no dock, any orientation that you want and any aesthetic. So from here, um, I'll hand it over to Maria to talk about how 
we made all of this kind of power and customization really easy to achieve for just everyday users. So, as Carl just said, uh, one of the really guiding principles that we've adopted, as you can clearly see from uh, some of the examples that have been shown, is that um, uh, customiz meaningful customization is really important, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming, which means uh, we kind of set the pretty difficult task for ourselves to try to walk that uh, line of balance and to achieve that balance, which could be challenging, of course. So, um, as also have been mentioned, uh, we early on we realized people do have different workflows. I mean, we all different, right? There are certain cases where we have muscle memory of certain things, of how we do certain things. Uh, there is also just the habits that we form, so we fall into like those habits, and um, they're really important to us. Um, so we didn't feel like we could just go all Sauron and have uh, a distri one thing to rule everyone. So. Um, we really wanted to pro make sure uh, people can still use the workflows that are comfortable, convenient, and uh, most productive for them. Which means that um, since we know we have ke people who prefer keyboard-driven navigation or keep, like, keyboard-driven workflows, we try to make sure we accommodate that. Um, obviously, a lot of people rely on the mouse, so that's another very large pattern and very large group that we try to make sure we um, enable users to do things very conveniently and quickly there. And um, same thing with touch, even though this one is probably just falling a little bit behind simply because of some uh, technical uh, considerations and limitations. And we do hope that we'll keep uh, going down that path and we'll um, keep widening different entry points and different kinds of workflows. But uh, that said, um, there are certain features, as Carl already mentioned, uh, that in, do enable people to kind of use one or the other workflow. For example, the auto tiling, you can definitely use that with the um, mouse, or you can use that with the keyboard. For example, moving windows around, uh, trying to, like, whatever you launch. So it, either you're going to use the dock with the, your mouse, probably, or you're going to use, can use the launcher with sh keyboard shortcuts. It's really up to you. Um, with floating windows, we also try to make sure that uh, things are possible both with the keyboard and with the mouse. Uh, I mean, we all are familiar with floating windows and uh, how you operate uh, with the mouse, but we also edit shortcuts, uh, same shortcuts that we use for auto tiling for, let's say, moving a window around, which is the super shift arrow keys in uh, Cosmic. Same shortcuts are going to snap windows uh, to edges, uh, like half tiles, quarter tiles for floating windows. So you don't even have to remember like more than one in this particular case, more than one shortcut, I mean. So uh, another thing is um, we really took, uh, well, I think the optional doc has been already mentioned. Um, we also have the configurable panel because you can kind of see there are different buttons there, but you can also configure it to make it more useful for you. And I'll dig deeper into the panel a little bit later. But um, as you can see, we took a sort of modular approach to Cosmic and to its architecture from the get-go, which means that um, what we call uplets, and you can see here in the, um, they basically look like icon buttons, but each of them is a separate uplet, um, so a separate software that's just running on its own. Um, so. Oh, I was <coughs> going to get there. Do you want to go back? <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> you can stay here, too. So in all of those uplets uh, is what makes it so configurable because, and there is the, that potential for growth that's um, kind of unprecedented because we can have more uplets in the future. And definitely the kind of functionalities that those uplets bring, the opportunities there are pretty limitless at this point. So that's another thing. But uh, with all of those options that are pretty much unlimited. How do you walk that line and that balance without, like, without overwhelming people? Because there is such a thing as a paradox of choice, um, um, and probably a lot of people have heard of it, but basically it means that in our society, frequently we have decision fatigue, and when we are faced with too many choices, like think of like last time you browsed for what film, what movie to watch, 
probably all of us experienced it where we spent more time just browsing for the movie rather than uh, compared to how long it takes us to watch something. So this is the ex classic example of decision fatigue, when we sort of freeze up when there are too many choices. On the other hand, uh, it's more common here in the US, uh, while uh, some uh, latest studies show that choice deprivation is still a problem too. And we do want to provide the freedom of choice because it's extremely important for us. This is how uh, people have autonomy over their decisions and we definitely value that. So in order for us to achieve that, uh, we kind of walked a sort of interesting sort of path where we definitely try not to swing one way or the other too much. And in order to do that, um, we had to kind of remind ourselves about certain things. And one of those things is that uh, we needed to balance, uh, achieve that balance between familiarity and unique features. And that's why we do have the doc because uh, there are a lot of operating systems nowadays, and we know that also a lot of people switch between different operating systems. Like you might be using one for work, and you might be using another one um, for your personal leisure time, which means that we constantly switch and things should still be familiar. So we do use some of the things that everyone pretty much knows them, and we do mm -hmm. use some of those more unique features like um, keyboard navigation and auto tiling, and just auto tiling in general that uh, we try to make them easier to use, but they're definitely sort of fall on that maybe slightly more complex uh, feature spectrum. We also try to keep our designs very simple and straightforward, and this is where I'm gonna kind of go back one slide, uh, just to show that this is the settings um, for the panel, and this is where we can kind of start also digging into the panel so that I can illustrate some of those things. Um, you can see that some of the features and some of the configurations for the panel are grouped on this page, which is the panel settings. For example, the position uh, along uh, the screen edge, the trans uh, auto hiding, uh, gaps between the panel, uh, sorry, between panel and screen edges, and um, also the appearance, because we know some people like um, for example, having dark panel while they use light mode for windows. So that's possible. And so things like that are grouped here. What we separated, and this is where we kind of, inside the design, we just group options and uh, build different structures. And so the next page at the bottom, um, configure panel applet. So if you click on it, sorry, the mode changed just because I'm trying to demonstrate different kinds of modes. But um, you can see how, uh, this is the page where you do can like, drag applets around and uh, you can add them to the panel and this is how you organize them. But obviously when you're focusing on that task, we're just trying to limit other distractions at this point. So we also try uh, trying to prioritize tasks like by frequency, as you can see from that example, uh, by importance, by complexity, and this is, uh, the panel is just one example of that because we really do that pretty much with every single feature we design or every single feature we bring to the table. So the level of consideration we are trying to use is kind of sometimes astonishing even to me. But that's what we are trying to do. Uh, speaking of panel and applets, kind of coming back a little bit um, and talking about <coughs> modularity a little bit more, one of the things with the panel that we've noticed is that a lot of, uh, like a lot of feedback and insight that we gained by just doing the research and talking to people is that not everyone thinks that the panel is as useful as it could be. And so we really decided to break the applets out of like the quick setting menu that a lot of people are nowadays used to into separate functionalities. So the Bluetooth is separate, Wi-Fi is separate, uh, the so sound applet is separate. And um, that means sometimes you can just go straight to Bluetooth if you're trying to connect your headphones, and that functionality is just right there in the applet. Um, with the sound applet, there is one very interesting feature that we kind of all love. Um, if you open that applet, and sorry, I don't have the screenshot for that, but we can get to that later on. Oh, okay, yeah, here we go. So there is that one toggle that potentially kind of is interesting this compared one. to other things. Yeah, that one. So it's the show media controls on top panel. 
So if you do that, um, if you toggle it on, well, it's not going to show them now because nothing is playing. But if there is something like um, a song from Spotify or um, some video on YouTube that's playing somewhere, you will have the media control buttons right on the panel, which means you don't need to click deeper in order for you to like pause the video. I don't know, let's say you've been like, watching it in the background is working. Extreme flavors? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> okay. And if you have uh, something that has forward or back tracks, you'll have forward or back as well at the panel. Yep. So this is just one of those examples of like how we <coughs> take the tiny step to bring more functionality and more usefulness, but also try not to go too far and not fall into the uh, choice paralysis situation. No, not make our users or people around us fall into the choice paralysis situation. And yeah, this is the applet. Oh, sorry, this is the <coughs> panel with applets, and uh, that's just one of those examples. Do you wanna? Me? Yeah. Oh. Um, so just to expand on applets a little bit. Um, so the panel has three sections, start, center, and end. We call it that because you could put it on the left, you could put it on the right, so, so it's not necessarily left, right, center, of course. Um, you can, uh, as Maria had said, drag them into any position that you want. You can remove applets that you just don't use. If, if you just don't, um, uh, if you just don't want a notifications applet, you just don't want it, you can just remove it. Um, but what's, I think, more, the reason we built, built it this way because we intend Cosmic to not only be the flagship desktop environment for Pop! OS, we built Cosmic so that people can build things with it. With, it is, Cosmic stands for Computer Operating System Main Interface Components. We, it is all the heavy lifting for every main interface component of an operating system. And it's for you or for a distro or for a company or for anyone to take these elements and use them however they'd like to build their own product with Cosmic. Cosmic is here, I mean, my, what I'm most excited about is to see what people can do with it and will make with it, because our, our ethos and our belief is that open source is about its ability for other people to use it to make things with. So, um, just on the operating, on like the normal desktop operating system side, you could imagine, as Maria had said, so, um, you know, some people might prefer, maybe Manjaro prefers a uh, quick settings list instead of individual applets. You write a quick settings applet, you remove these, you put uh, your applet there, and now you have your own UX. Yeah, I think this is actually kind of an right. example of the panel being customized. Yeah, but yeah precisely. Um, maybe, uh, maybe Fedora would like to just have a, a panel on the bottom. And that's how they would prefer to provide their U as a user experience. Um, we have an application library, but that doesn't mean that, any, that you can't replace that with any kind of application library that you think might be a better user experience. So the, the point is to enable the creativity and the capability of the Linux community uh, to explore possible user experience possibilities in a way that's very high quality. We're not, these are individual applications that can't affect each other. Um, they're embedded into the panel, um, or, or um, they're launching in the, in the compositor. So when you launch the applications library, it opens it up um, like any other, like any other uh, application. And while this is what we prefer, and we like a launcher, is our, like that's our, our Windows key, our super menu. That's how we launch and switch applications in Pop! OS. But maybe that's not the best for another use case. That's the point behind Cosmic, so you can use it to build whatever uh, user experience you'd like. So that's why we built Cosmic at Cosmic. Um, one, we wanted to provide innovative user experiences. So there's so much creativity and capability, um, and just unique experiences built in the Linux ecosystem itself. Uh, I, mean, I think the innovation in Linux is happening in places like i3 and Sway and um, like small communities and distros that are building things that are really unique and um, and these are these are ideas that we want to make more accessible to to a broader set of people by, by making it easy to use auto tiling whether it's mouse or keyboard um, whether it's uh, per workspaces or all your workspaces just making these advanced and innovative um, ideas more accessible. Um, additionally, uh, additionally uh, better security with Rust. 
Cosmix is written in Rust, uh, memory safe Rust from the bottom up. It includes the toolkit, the compositor, all the applications. Everything you're seeing is written in Rust. Um, of course, memory safety is, is uh, critical. And uh, Google, Microsoft, and this, all report 70% of severe vulnerabilities are memory safety vulnerabilities. Um, Google has decided they're not going to write any new code. All new code must be written in a memory safe language. So they started that about two years ago, and since then, the vo memory safety vulnerabilities in Android have dropped considerably. With how much coverage, simple Rust coverage we're having in the, in the desktop environment with, with uh, Cosmic, it will be it will have the most memory safe code coverage of any operating system out there. Um, and uh, as I had mentioned, a platform for building OS experiences. So it is the flagship for Pop OS. We do our user research and our experimentation. But we're just one company you know, building a Linux distribution. What could the community do with a, pow a powerful platform to build experiences and experiment with? Um, if you'd like to discuss Cosmic, we're, we have a Mattermost channel. Uh, this QR code will take you to that if you want to snap a, an image or, get it or, or grab that. Um, uh, our, all of our developers, all of, uh, Maria and I are in there. If you want to talk about Cosmic, uh, you, what you, ideas you have, things you'd like to uh, maybe do with it, um, uh, we're open to uh, ideas and conversations and just uh, excited about bringing the software to everyone. Um, all the code is on, on GitHub. LibCosmic is the application for writing Cosmic applications and applets. And uh, Cosmic... Um, Cosmic Star, if you just search for Cosmic, you're going to find all the repositories. There's like 100 of them. It's a, it's a huge project, but um, at the same time, even though it's a huge project, it's all written from scratch. It doesn't have any like legacy cruft, so uh, I, th I think our ISO is going to be tiny <laughs> when, we, when the Pop, Pop, Cosmo, uh, Pop Cosmic uh, release comes. It's going to be, I can notice, that's not Ubuntu or anything, but it was like a six gig ISO. <laughs> I, I think we're going to be down to like maybe two or something like that. Um, so we're pretty excited about how, um, you know, the, just the density of the, uh, of the code base as well. Um, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's our last slide. So uh, questions? Yes. Uh, there is a I, API that's actually pretty stable already, and um, so we organize these by name. You can see every process, every applet is its own process. If one crashes, you know, your desktop doesn't crash. Uh, there's nothing step, stepping on top of each other. Um, of course, you have to have an entry point, so like Cosmic Session, there's uh, you know, a single point there um, in general that if that crashes, you bring your session down. It's just kind of part of the nature of it. But, but um, everything itself is its own process. Uh, yes? Okay, sorry. As evidenced by what just happened, I am blind. It's quite all right. So, uh, yes. I'm a blind developer, mm -hmm. and uh, I was wondering what's the story behind the, the accessibility with screen readers and all that kind of stuff. Because right. I've tried them all, and right now the state of work, uh, which is quote unquote the nicest, <laughs> um, but that's yeah. that's being kind to it. Right. Okay. Um, this is a challenging subject, um, mostly because of Wayland. Uh, so, um, in Cosmic, there's a there's a, a fantastic project called Access Kit, and it's a, a REST a platform for accessibility. Um, that's being integrated in a number of different um, toolkits, including um, Iced, which we're using for uh, for LibCosmic and for Cosmic itself. Um, the challenge with Wayland is that inside the for security reasons, each application is only supposed to be able to see what's inside of itself. 
um, meaning that um, a third-party application like Orca that needs to see into it is uh, breaking that, that protocol. Mm -hmm. So there are new protocols being written today and worked on um, to enable that. Um, uh, accessibility is something that's really important to us, and so as this, um, as our our platform evolves and we get closer and closer to release, um, we've done a lot of work with XSKit already. Um, we'll be doing more work um, to enable Orca, and you know, I I honestly couldn't tell you is Orca bad because Orca's bad, is Orca bad because Wayland's like moving ahead of it, and now we need to get things patched up. Uh, you know, I, I honestly don't know, but I would also love feedback on how we're doing in Cosmic um, as we get further down the road. I think usually the biggest problem is that there's a bunch of, besides the Cosmic tooling, there's like your Visual Studio Code, then you have your browser and all this kind of stuff, right? Because yeah. uh, when you go to the day and day work, uh, you usually work on, in, on stuff that, for better or for worse, is not written by the OS vendor. And right. that's where it starts to, that's where it usually starts to break because some of the GTK stuff, yeah, it's made for screen readers and it will work fine, but then you open up uh, some web browser to read the console or open up your your code or you want to read line 30 on the terminal and mm -hmm. it's like, how to, so that's the hard part. I think that's all fantastic feedback because those are the things that we need to be looking out for as we um, as we QA our, our platform. Yeah, and it's definitely like on my to-do list too. To, to try yeah. dive deeper into that and spend more time just trying to, to refine the accessibility layer. Yeah. Uh, but if uh, you do have the opportunity, if you have a, you know the, the time and inclination and want to join our community and provide feedback, um, we're not, um, it's a work in progress, yeah. but uh, we would love to hear from people that are using these tools and what problems they're having. Yeah. Yes? You talked a bit about how you've got this this pared down set of configurable things for the users so they don't get overwhelmed, but they can still set things up the way that they want. Do you have any uh, mechanism built in to either interact with that those configuration menus programmatically or to back up and restore your config if you need to move to a new computer or do a reinstall? Yes, we have Cosmic Config. Um, it's kind of like G settings. Um, so uh, it's all you know the same type of concept. Um, everything can be backed up and restored. Uh, in Pop! OS, we have a, a restore function that will will take your, um, uh, essentially, if you've just nuked your operating system, you can go into the restart partition and reinstall it, but it doesn't touch your home directory. So uh, as soon as you get back into your operating system, all your settings were what they were before. Um, you talked a lot about applets and you showed these ones here that look like they would launch applications. Um, yeah. To put a custom one in there, does someone have to write their own like dot desktop file or can you have it just launch an arbitrary command? Uh, this is um, the app tray, so that's an applet itself. Okay. And um, so it's reading any, you're, I just favorited desktop applications and added it to it. Um, just in like the classic, can I drag this down here? Wow. Look at that! It worked. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, I'm just favoriting things and adding it to it, and everything in the applications uh, library is uh, .desktop file. Okay. I think my, mm. my, my my actual question behind the question is: is can you make it so you push one of those buttons on that that applet tray, um, and it just runs a command in the background? You this can you can so this not this tray is meant for this this use case, but you can write an applet that could do anything that you wanted to do. Um, we have an applet, if we get into our settings and uh, go into the panel and choose configure, um, I can add an applet for the, let's see, where is it at? For the applications library. You see how it was added there in the top left? Um, I can make that, let's make this a little bigger too. So if I choose applications, I'm launching the app library. Um, you can use this applications applet as a template for um, anything that you would want to launch. Um, and it can be an icon, it can be text. Um, it can even, in some cases, uh, it will convert from text to, uh, to an icon. Like if I move the panel to the left, the text doesn't work very well and uh, you know, when it's on the left side. So here you can see that it changed to an app icon. Yeah. Okay. Yes.
Yeah. It is a combination. So um, our, we are uh, members of the uh, one of our a voting member of the Wayland um, community, and so we contribute to protocols for Wayland. And um, uh, I mean, a lot of our work because we're building compositor and a Wayland compositor, <laughs> um, we're, we're very well integrated into that community. And then uh, deep, uh, uh, deep as well, you know, standard interfaces. And custom ones as, as well as, you know, as necessary for building a, a desert environment. Yes? Okay, so I have two questions. You mentioned you guys are uh, used to uh, contribute to the Wayland community. I wonder if you guys also mentioned that you guys will support HDR on the bus in Cosmic. So does it mean you guys can afford some of the libraries from Wayland? And uh, the second question is that, and uh, you guys mentioned that uh, some other distributions like Nagero have their own uh, interpretation of the user experience. So are you guys going to make effort to make Cosmic available to other uh, living distributions? Right. Okay, for the first question, um, so Wayland is a, is a set of protocols that we are implementing inside of our own compositor. Um, how, did, how did you start that question? ACR. ACR, thank you. Okay, um, ACR is work in progress. And um, so we do expect, there are some consequences for ACR, like battery life and other things to consider. And so um, uh, I think just the Linux community at large is working on HDR and, and kind of and the expectation is that um, it'll be ready for prime time from, from the entire stack, from Mesa to Kernel to Wayland protocols uh, within a couple of years, and, you know, hopefully shorter. But we'll be able to do things like, I, I know we're working on like um, uh, wide color gamuts and things, uh, things of that nature. Um, and you just kind of take piece by piece and, to get HDR implemented. Uh, but it is a Linux community exp um, like project and effort, right? Uh, the second question was, so it's packaged for um, Fedora and NixOS currently. Um, uh, there's some folks in our Pop OS or in the uh, Cosmic uh, community um, who are uh, putting the, the packaging effort in there. Um, so it'll be up to distributions to package it, um, but we'll be there to support and provide um, assistance um, for, for anyone that wants to package it. We want to make it really easy to package, really easy to deliver to users, and really easy for those distributors to build whatever experience they think is best for their users. Yes? Uh, what is the current state of the LibCosmic uh, documentation? Uh, <laughs> 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 it's in development. <laughs> um, LibCosmic itself has examples inside of it. So, and the documentation uh, uh, is, is improving uh, considerably. Um, uh, we're using uh, like uh, uh, create and uh, cargo documentation methods. So, um, so there's a lot of, of automated documentation ready. What we don't have developed is, is something like, okay, here's the anatomy of an application and the widgets you should use in these different places. That's what, uh, that's what we still have to work on. Yeah, but that's definitely coming pretty yeah. soon. So. Yep. Uh, yes? Uh, how are themes and styling configurations exposed to frameworks besides ICE? So like your GTKs, oh, okay. Uh Yeah, that's a great question. So, so in experimental settings, there's a toggle here that says apply this theme to GNOME apps. Now if I open like Warp, this one we just used, it has the same forest green, the same accents, and the same appearance. Um, this is opt-in uh, because we want to respect the GNOME's project's des you know, desire to you know, apply their own aesthetic to their applications. But they've also expressed the desire to allow users to modify their themes as long as distros aren't modifying their themes. <laughs> so, um, so it's an opt-in in the platform for um, users to match their style. Okay. And does that take the form of like just Generation for that? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly. There's a, I believe there's a libcosmic API that is, or sorry, uh, libadueta um, uh, API that is stable. And there's some applications, uh, I don't recall their name, uh, but we're using the exact same style that the GNOME uh, users are to apply the, the variables to the, the correct um, widget. Gotcha. Um, Basically, you, there is like a variable pairing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you like to see some of the theming? Um, okay, so as you can see here, we have this 
like dark forest green. Do you want to drive this part? Sure. Okay, we will drive. All right, mm. especially if you can see me from behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least you'll be able to hear me, if not see me, and because uh, the computer's kind of tall. So this is basically a custom theme because uh, Cosmic is not uh, green by default. Uh, Cosmic is just using grayscale. Uh, this is just a custom theme that I put together for fun. Because um, why? Who doesn't enjoy sometimes the calm uh, wallpaper and the calm look? Maybe at the end of like a very busy work day. But this is what we have, though. Um, that's something you can do. Sorry, it should be dark because it's clearly a dark theme. And this is how the settings uh, page for appearance looks like. So you can see different kinds of things here that you can play with. And um, this is kind of the fun part, I feel like. Um, so this is one of those. Um, if you switch to light, for example. Uh, you might want to import another one. I imported the dark thing on light. Yeah. <laughs> no, what I'm trying to do is switch to, oh, OK, here we go. Oh, there you go. What I was trying to do is just reset to default, just to show you that this is how the default actually looks like <laughs> for light theme um, specifically. But if I uh, go up here, up here, and I can import the themes because I played with more than one, because it's kind of difficult to stop once you start. Um, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there is this one, this theme that I really like. And I actually do have it on my laptop. It's you can see that the difference is very subtle, and I think the color kind of <coughs> is more gray on the uh, when you clone it, like on the mirroring. But it's basically that very very subtle violetish like hue to the uh, light theme, which I really do enjoy a lot. Um, maybe oh, sorry. We can open another application, and this is how that looks. Um, you can also just turn on the auto tiling, and you can see how this looks. And this is the Cosmic App Store. And also just the magic that I really like, even though that's not theming, that this is the tiling part. So um, I can also go. Um, and match wallpaper very nicely <coughs> to this other theme. For example, if I go to wallpaper and choose a different wallpaper, then this <coughs> is how the theme is going to look like. And I think that's actually going to bring out, out the hue a little bit more. Another fun part um, for the desktop environment, and let me just use. Uh, sorry, another fun part for theming. If, for example, I switch back to um, the green forest or whatever you call it, this greenish theme, um, let's say uh, like now with that lilac wallpaper, it just doesn't kind of clash a little bit. Well, it, I mean, the color is not too bad, but still. So you can go and um, do a theme that I call Scarlet Witch. Uh, don't ask me for what reasons, because, oh. Sorry, some in development process, so I ha will have to reopen some of the apps. But this is how the theme looks. You can see here that this is a little bit more colorful than the, uh, the previous two themes, and the reason is because uh, there is a main window background that's one color, and then the nav bar is a different background, has a different background. Um, it's because by default here, for example, if I go back to light, uh, you can see that uh, there is the container background uh, in here. And if you click on it, um, it's <coughs> going to explain a little bit more, but this is that back second background that uh, we calculate automatically by default. Again, because not potentially every person is going to even try to change that one, but you can. Um, and this is um, if you switch to that. If you switch to that dark theme, to this is what you're going to have. So you can see which containers change. Yeah. So um, you can change it, yeah, totally. So you're changing these containers over here. Um, the background window is changing this color here. 
the text on top is automatic, the contrast is automatically contra uh, is calculated to keep the contrast throughout the interface of double A or better. Yeah. So double A is the or, or It's the double A is the main target. We but try to target triple A when we can. Uh, even though triple A really desaturate like the co contrast is pretty high, so it desaturates the colors. The one thing that still needs to um, kind of be added is the accent text color, because currently it's sort of the same as the accent color. But it's going to be more desaturated because of the color contrast, the text specifically, because once you choose the accent color, it's going to apply to it. Uh, highlighted buttons and uh, toggle, like selected toggle states and things like that. But um, it is going to still adjust the text automatically. And it's a kind of sort of complicated system uh, for theming on the back, even just on the design side, because a lot of things we automatically calculate, but we still try to make sure that you can use custom colors, like those window backgrounds, like the container backgrounds. Um, you, and, but that's kind of the reason for the fact that we uh, automatically calculate certain colors is the reason behind interface text tint because you don't necessarily ch uh, select the exact color because we are trying to ensure you can still read the text. Um, and the control component tint, and sorry, if anyone can think of a better label, please let me know. Um, <laughs> but it's basically the tint that controls things like, um, if I close this one, you can see the two buttons at the top, uh, the import and export. And so the background for, that, for those buttons currently is just gray. Um, because it's using neutrals, um, but when you do control component tint, it's going to tint them slightly in whatever color is chosen. We do try, we are going to try to keep that one still kind of closer to neutral, just because otherwise it gets like a rainbow, and it's I don't know who can tolerate that one, but I'm sure people can, so we'll see. I'm sure there's going to be some fun themes that we'll see. Yeah, so we we strongly believe that if your tools are not powerful enough that you can make ugly things. <laughs> They're not powerful enough for you to make beautiful things either. So while you could make it in any style or fashion that you want, and um, maybe it's not the most beautiful thing, you can, if you're not, if you don't have the power to, to just explore and to build and to create. You just can't make beautiful things if you can't also use the same tools for ugly things. Uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure you can see it. <laughs> so that's why we, uh, we calculate all the um, uh, contrast with text and buttons and other, other widgets. There is another light theme. Switch to light. Which one? Uh, the early sunset, the first one. Yeah, this is another example of like containers being different in light <coughs> this time. Um, you notice that the, uh, here's the font here, or here's the application library. Um, the, the launcher has these nice, you know, rounded widgets and rounded corners here. If, and uh, you notice these, these widgets as well, the toggle buttons, and, um, were in the, or these sliders, if we change it to square, everything is square now. The sliders and everything else, if you prefer, if you prefer a more square interface, you have control over those radiuses, um, or slightly round. Uh, we didn't want to overwhelm, uh, overwhelm the UX, so we, have, we think we have a pretty good, you know, between rounded and square, and then something in the middle is pretty good. But in the back-end configuration, if someone wanted to, to you know, set a specific radius, um, that would be possible as well. Yes. You um, you've, you've shown a lot about this this theming for for the, the edges and for um, the colors. <coughs> Is there any theming exposed to the user or to someone developing a theme to change how the window decorations, such as the title bar and the, the three buttons up there, could there be different graphics in there? Or uh, I, I'm trying <coughs> to get to a point similar to like Crux, if you remember that from ancient XFCE. I don't actually. <laughs> um, the the header bar is so we have a few settings for the header bar, like well, whether um, buttons should be there, like maximize and minimize, things like that. Um, but the overall user experience for um, like where you expect a button to be and where uh, where a 
and like that where the navigation bar on the left will come out, those are pretty well set into uh, the, the user experience. Yeah, they're baked into the design system, um, yeah. which, mean, which has header bar as one of the components. Yeah, one of our, uh, so our, our, one of our concepts is that the, the desktop should be, everything has to be responsive in Cosmic, uh, because it needs to go down all the way to a single column, so Cosmic could be used for mobile devices, or if you're tiling and you get down to a single column, that application still needs to be usable. So if you'll see uh, something like the App Store, um, as we drag it down, it goes down to a single column. Um, and you can still expand the navigation to get back to the original, you know, to different um, places that you're looking for. So if you're in a file browser, for instance, and we pull things over, the same thing, and now I can get back to all my favorites still. Uh, but that's part, uh, and that's part of the user experience to um, to keep a certain level of consistency. So I said we're not opinionated, <laughs> but but um, but there is a certain amount of opinionated design going in, so that there's consistent consistent experience between applications. Yes. You guys any plans of? Uh, making the applets also be widgets as well, desktop. Possibly, yes. I think that would be a pretty cool idea. Yeah, we've um, talked about it. Yeah, uh, we're, uh, like today, you go into the settings application, you can move applets around, um, and if uh, uh, you know, eventually we want to, you know, like a Cosmic V2, you'll be able to enter like an editing mode in the panel and just do it directly on the panel. Um, maybe you'll be able to grab a widget and drop it on the desktop. Or grab a widget from one panel. Um, the developers might be screaming when they hear this. Well, <laughs> okay. Grab it from well, one panel. There is another. an easy one, but, yeah. right? Uh, so you can still do it through settings. You just will be able to like configure the desktop widgets directly. Yeah. That's kind of what I envisioned when we first talked about it. Yeah. The plans can change, but yeah. Yeah. Um, right. After uh, so we've been developing this for two years, and uh, it's uh, I mean it's getting there, and so we're very very excited about delivering this to everyone and, and getting feedback. Uh, um, but we're already thinking about what does Cosmic V2 <laughs> look like? Because we've got to stop adding features <laughs> and then ship Cosmic. Yes? Actually, I guess my question, I was curious if you guys have set a release date or a specific version of POP you're going to produce with the, pop, the Cosmic and the default. Cosmic will ship with POP 2404. But, and it will ship this year, but the exact date's to be determined. Um, we expect to have an alpha release. Um, I think we should have our first alpha within two months, I think. Um, we just have a lot of bug fixes to do, and then we'll have likely another alpha, uh, a beta, and then and then release. So, um, you know, a lot of things can happen within that time, but that's where we're at. Um, if you would, if um, if you're so inclined, I would appreciate everyone participating in the alpha and providing feedback and bug reports. Um, I'm particularly interested in people that are doing gaming on Cosmic uh, because I want to see how well um, gaming is kind of complex and uh, just knowing how well games launch, where if they launch in the right place, if things look as they'd expect, we really want to see a lot of that as well. Yeah, I think we have a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes for a couple more, I guess. Yeah. I think I saw someone. Yes. Um, your toolkit, is it mostly just for Cosmic stuff? Was it a viable like, general application toolkit for the developers? And if so, does it have support for like, other platforms like Windows, Mac, or Android? It's a fantastic question. And, um, Cosmic apps work on Windows and Linux. Um, the LibCosmic and the uh, and our toolkit is designed to work uh, cross-platform. Um, so yes, the uh, applications um, are, are cross-platform. Uh, what's really fascinating about this is over the last two years, we've been part of building the Rust GUI ecosystem. So it didn't really exist. And uh, there wasn't even a, a text renderer. So we wrote Cosmic Text, which has become pretty much the de facto text rendering for, for Rust applications. And just being a part of the Rust community and, and building this ecosystem has been, been pretty exciting. Yes? So on the long, I'll actually have a long of gaming one. Now, how well does the desktop handle switching between the, inter, the integrated GPU versus the dedicated GPU for, for hybrid graphics? So as an OEM, we sell laptops with NVIDIA GPUs and, and hybrid graphics, so it's how well it works is extremely important to us. Mm -hmm. um, the NVIDIA driver and uh, and our efforts in Cosmic Comp, the compositor, um, have gotten it to the point where hybrid graphics out of the box, like you don't need integrated anymore. You can use hybrid and it works so well that you're getting all the battery savings and the GPU will only turn on when, I don't have, 
I don't have uh, NVIDIA on here. But in this application, in the battery menu, if you're using your dedicated GPU, there will be a small dot next to the battery. When you click on it, inside of this list, it'll say you're using your dedicated graphics uh, uh, GPU, uh, battery life may be lower, and you can expand a list and you can see which applications are using the, the dedicated GPU. So you can, as a user, have a conscious choice of, okay, well, I don't really need that running. Um, I, don't, I care about battery life right now, so I'll just close that application, and it turns off your GPU. And it's not even sipping power, it turns off the GPU. There's one more question. Any other questions? Oh, yes, <laughs> you can. Yeah. Yeah, I have my own bias here as a UX designer. Like, you can't see anything. You can't do that. Which is why I'm like, but it exists. It's important. <laughs> um, my other follow-up question is that uh, I think the legal language here it is to uh, oh, nice. compatibility with GNOME apps. Um, what about Qt apps? Because I, I assume GNOME means GTK. Right. Um, we would love to, um, like we uh, demonstrated, uh, GTK apps being able to uh, absorb the libcosmic um, uh, appearance settings. Uh, we want to do the same thing with Qt and Qt apps. So we'd love to work with the QDE community on making um, the cross-platform, cross-desktop environment experience great for all of our applications. Yeah. I, I have kind of a related question. Yeah. Um, are you considering supporting the like various protocols that Caitlin and KDE are adding to Wayland, like global menu support, SSD, SSD decoration protocol? Yeah. Like yeah, I mean, KDE uh, is really, I think, on the edge of, of development when it comes to uh, Wayland protocols and things they're doing. One that we're really excited about is Frosted Effect, uh, because we're going to apply, uh, uh, Maria doesn't, she, she hates this. <laughs> clear panel uh, because of contrast and you're supposed to hate that but frosted effect if you do it well you can have that frosted effect without uh, without um, hurting usability and readability. yeah hurting usability and readability and things like that so we're very um, excited about implementing that uh, for a frosted effect across the platform you could you could imagine like the application library having a frosted effect effect behind the app library so um, so yes uh, all of this I mean, Wayland is a, a big community where we're all contributing and collaborating on, on protocol development, and it's getting really close. I know it feels like it's been forever, but it, it's really getting there. Is Frosted Effect just blurred transparency? What is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, like a Gaussian blur in, in effect, yeah. Yes. So Pop! OS is shipping with, uh, like in the Raspberry Pi operating system, like Flasher for SD cards. Um, is there, when you guys go alpha, beta, you start releasing Cosmic with Pop! OS, is that gonna go with the, you know, the, S, you know, the, the stuff compiled for ARM as well? Uh, yes, uh, Cosmic will be compiled for ARM as well. Awesome. Yeah, great. Any questions? All right, well thank you very much everyone. We really appreciate you coming to our talk. <laughs>